Hello, this is Mr. Doty, and I want to go over with you today a little bit on how to work with viewports in AutoCAD. So, what I'm doing is I have the drawing, and this is 12.33, which is our uh, pipe wrench handle. And basically, uh, what you're given is you're given a drawing. And if I go back over here, here's what you're given. It says broken out, revolved section, and then a view enlargement. And pipe wrench handle is the name of it. And this is our material, fillets and rounds, radius 06. Uh, then the specific instructions tell you to take your sketch, which has actual fractional dimensions, convert all sizes to all size dimensions to two place decimals, and location dimensions to three place. Well, yeah, that sort of works. But anyway, main thing is this is kind of going to be your, um, well, this is going to be your detail view. Okay? Now, there are a few things that you need to do to make sure that you have this all set up right. So when I go back over here at AutoCAD, uh, I named this viewport task and then I couldn't find it. So anyway, I finally found it and I've been playing around with this for a little while and I thought you know what I'll just go ahead and make the video and we'll go from there so um, there may be some dimensions missing possibly because I'm not perfect and I just wanted to get this to show you what I'm looking for this isn't about dimensioning as much as it is about how to use the viewports um, the other thing is I was going to show you a little bit on the annotative uh, scales and that's where we'll get into the viewport. So what I did here is you'll notice that I didn't scale this up. This is the same size as this over here. I just copied this over, added a short break line. I just, well, the one I drew, when I draw them, I use a polyline. This uh, drawing that I borrowed off of somebody, uh, they use just lines, which is fine. It doesn't matter. As long as it looks broken off like that, we're good. The uh, other thing that you'll need to do is you'll need to do your broken out section here. So if I was looking at this, you know, if I was in class and I'd say, hey, so explain to me why is it that I need to do a broken out section for this, uh, this bolt hole here, uh, this tapped hole. And hopefully somebody would pipe up and say, well, Mr. Doty, you can't dimension it because it's hidden and there's not a view that shows it solid. So what we do is we create a section view. That's part of what this chapter is about. And this is a broken out section. So what I did is I took a polyline and I just kind of drew it over here. Do, 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 do. Now the other thing you need to remember is um, you probably haven't had threads yet and that's okay. So what I did is I took my number 29 drill, which you'll have to just go look it up, Google it, look in the book. There, or if you have a machinist handbook, you can look up drill sizes. So it's a number 29 drill, and uh, it has a depth of 0.375. Now, maybe that doesn't have a thread on it. I guess I could be wrong. Let me go back and double check. For some reason, I thought it had threads. Nope. Well, I'm not exactly sure why you would have a hole that's not threaded, but hey, they didn't tell us threads, so never mind. Okay, well, I drew threads in accidentally then. Oh, well. No big deal. So, um, on yours, we'll see how many people actually pay attention. So, on yours, you wouldn't actually have these hidden lines. I'm sorry, I apologize. That's me trying to do things and fix things and make things the way I thought they were supposed to be. But, you can dimension this like so. And that's fine. Uh, this is an annotative. Remember, we're using annotative for dimensions. Uh, this is a multi-liter. Uh, and I just put this in like so. All right. Uh, location dimensions. I did the location dimension. It just happened to work out that most of the dimensions, now it said the two places, but you know what? Um, if it's 1.5, it doesn't have to say 1.50. Because, you know, I like you to suppress your, your trailing zeros and, of course, your leading zeros. 
And uh, this one was really hard to dimension. And like I said, I could have left out some dimensions. Um, I put some dimensions over here on this view for this part just because this gets really busy. So the main, main part of this was to show you viewports. So when I'm talking viewports, I went to my B-size paper because that's what I was going to try to use. So um, what I'm going to do is we're going to leave this open enough to where you can have um, notes down here. You could have notes up here if you wanted to. It, I'm just trying to lay it out to where it looks like, you know, it's correct. So basically this is a viewport. And um, when we create our A size viewport, you know, I have you stretch this all the way down here because you're only going to have one viewport you've only got room for you know one set of views that are scaled to whatever scale and what I've done here is I'm going to activate my viewport and you'll notice down here that it's at one to one right okay and then that one's active well this is another viewport that I made if I pick over here you'll notice that this one I have set to two to one you're like, oh. So what it does is it blows this up two times. You'll notice that it looks kind of bigger, right? Well, hopefully that means that I've done what I was supposed to do. And you'll also notice that if I deactivate, which I could just double click out here or click on model space down here. If I zoom up right here, you'll notice that the size of the text here is equal to the size of the text here and here. So that's what I want. I want my eighth inch letters. Um, I want my you know, dimensions to be eighth inch tall because this is an inch drawing. Okay. So this is how I use it. So you're like, well, how did you get that viewport? Well, you'll notice that when you're on your layout tabs, you have this extra little layout tab as far as the ribbon goes so if you click on this right here if you ever lose your viewport all you have to do is click on the layout tab up here on top of the ribbon here and then you can click on new you can do you can click on here as far as different like you can go around object you can you can have it um, work around an object you can do a polygon where you can just trace it. Like if I pick polygon, then I can do this. And there's viewport. And of course, every time you make a viewport, it will automatically go to the layer that you put it on, which I didn't mean for it to be on this layer. Uh, I have my properties up over here. I'll show you here in a second what I'm going to use it for. But basically what it does is it will pull in whatever information you already had in your drawing and it just zooms it in, uh, you know, does like a zoom all, okay? All right, I'm just going to delete that. But so basically all I did is I came up here and I did a rectangular and I just, you know, did this right. So, boom. Now, one thing that I need to add to our um, template as far as if you're going to use multiple viewports is you need to have a viewport layer so I went under my layer manager just like you know we always do our layer manager you know we add layers I clicked on this little button right here it popped up I typed you know it said layer one and I just changed it to viewport and I didn't change anything else because I'm not worried about it and then I closed out my layers and went about my business now, you're probably going, you know, that doesn't look really good because I can see the outline of this lovely thing. Why can't I just stretch them over so that they overlap? Well, then you're not going to be able to get to them very easily, and it just becomes a real pain. So what I want to do is I'm going to get rid of this guy. These two right here, if you'll notice, if I pick on them, they're on the viewport layer, right? Okay. So let me go up here to my little layer manager, pull down, 
and I'm going to turn viewport off. And you're like, but, but you just, wait a minute. What? Well, isn't that cool? Imagine that. It's still there. So basically all it did is it took the outline of it and it turned it off. So that's pretty cool. See, check that out. So now it looks like I have these cool views on here at different scales. Now, this down here is an issue, but we're going to fix it here in a second. So that's viewports. And so you can um, add as many viewports as you need. You know, if you're using a different size sheet of paper, uh, C or D size, and you need multiple viewports to show different views, this is how you do it. You just go in. Um, I'm going to go back and turn them on just so that I can see them. And if you need to adjust them, you have to go back and turn them on. Okay. Uh, you just go at the layout. You click on whichever one you need up here, rectangular or whatever. You draw your viewport. Uh, obviously, it should be on the right layer. So I'm going to put it on the right layer. Viewport. Boom. All right. And then, you know, when I get things the way I want them, then I go up here. When I'm getting ready to turn this in to say it's finished or print it off, there it is. Now, I can also tell it not to print the viewport layer, and I'm pretty sure it'll do the same thing as turn it off. It just won't print the lines, and you'll still have the picture. So it's been a while since I've done that, but it should work that way. But I just like doing the viewport, turn it off, and then I'm ready to go. Because, you know, a lot of times what we'll do now is we'll, um, we'll make PDFs out of, of drawings and send them to people. So, anyway, um, that's pretty much what I need to show you as far as viewports. Now, as far as dimensions, I did have one little thing I wanted to show you. And basically what that is, is when you have anything that's annotated, okay, if you pick on it and you right click go to properties I've already got properties up over here and you'll notice that it says style is annotative annotative scale is one to one well if you click over here there's a little box if you click on it again it pulls up this nice little thing here that says object scale list well I want this to be two to one so I'm gonna hit add and I'm gonna go down here to two to one because it's not fitting you know at a quarter inch size when I'm done so I want it to be eight uh, and match the rest of these so I'm gonna go two to one hit OK and then I'm gonna go to my one to one and I'm just gonna click on delete and you're like well why do you want to do that for well basically what that does is that enables me to not every time I touch one of these that you get a whole bunch of different like let me see I don't think of I'm trying to think if I've picked on any. Oh, so you notice there where you've got two different scales. See, that's how you can get rid of that. It's by going over here to the annotative scale and getting rid of the ones you don't want. Now, it doesn't bother me, and it's not a big deal. Main thing you want to remember is have your triangles. Remember your magic triangles. Have them on, and you'll be in good shape. So, basically, that's a little short thing on viewports. Probably went longer than I wanted to. Uh, looks like, yep. Well, it's about 13 minutes. That's not too bad. So anyway, this is uh, what I'm looking for as far as for this drawing. Um, so I'm looking for something like this. Put your notes down here. Make sure that you create your viewport layer. And then when you're done, turn it off. And turn it in. And I'll be happy with it. So that's all I've got for now. And we will catch you later.